Hi everyone, how are you going? Today I'm going to be doing a short film on basic pen and ink. So it's really for beginners. Um, I hope you've watched how to make your own ink pens and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this film. Thank you. Hi everyone, today we're going to be working with pen and ink. Um, so in episode four, I showed you how to make your own ink pens and I hope you enjoyed that. Um, you'll need to have had watched that film before you watch this one. So t I'm, I'm working with uh, water soluble ink today and I've um, diluted the ink. Um, I also explained about that earlier in the other workshop too. So it's going to be a lot of fun today. It's, it's really for total beginners this workshop that I'm doing. It's showing you the basic marks you can make with the homemade pens and, and how to um, bring a little bit of wash into it as well. So with this particular, um, I'm using a like what you call a barbecue stick and I've nipped the end off this one with like a little knife to make it a bit blunter than the previous one. So that's for thick strokes. Here I'm using um, a little piece of balsa wood. You can make um, so many, um, use so many different objects for making marks um, with your pen and ink. Sometimes I use sea sponges, um, little pieces of cloth or tissue. On the uh, left hand screen there is a little pen and ink that I've got in one of my books. Um, I've written and illustrated four books. Um, they're a combination of oil paintings, watercolours and a lot of pen and inks. So here I'm using an old credit card making marks on my paper. You can, um, you know, use many different surfaces for pen and ink. Here I'm working on a piece of card, um, stretched watercolour paper works quite well. I'm deliberately making a mess here, I'm just showing you the way the water interacts with the ink. Just going to give you a bit of an idea of how you might go about doing a tree now. So I've just um, lightly drawn in the tree trunk there. I'm using a number 10 watercolour brush, I'm putting heaps of water on, can't put on too much at this stage. just dipping the ink in, letting it do its own thing. I find pen and ink really good to do if I'm going out into the bush to do some rough sketches before um, doing an oil painting. Um, it's a very, very quick media to work in and tonal value is really good. It saves all that shading in, in pencil. Um, now I'm working on just photocopying paper. So if, you, if you're just starting in pen and ink, you know, photocopying paper's fine. I mean, you're not probably not going to keep whatever you do. It's just purely exercises. I'm just going in with a bit more water. I'm just going to do another tree now. Later on in this workshop, I'll be doing some basic shapes, um, cylinders, a few little objects to show you how to you can control the ink if you wish to.
The paper's dried quite quickly. The cheaper and the thinner the paper, um, the quick, more quickly it gets absorbed, the ink and the water, and it doesn't work as well. But, you know, you're just practicing. I'm just going to put a little bit, little dog in here. In a previous episode, episode four, um, I show you how to stretch your watercolour paper, all the different types of paper that you can use for both uh, watercolour and, and inks, the different weights and stuff like that. Quite often um, I do a lot of abstract works um, with pen and ink and um, so just by using the end of balsa wood dipped into a saucer that's got ink in can make um, some, you know some sharp lines if that's what you're looking for. I mean this picture that I'm doing now is quite hideous really it's just a exercise you know it's just everything's out of proportion it's just just showing you what marks you can make on paper I have lots of um, YouTube movies out um, oil painting for beginners and advanced acrylic workshop um, soft pastel color theory so here I have a um, sheet of hot pressed watercolor paper that I've stretched I've drawn in a circle and a cylinder a little flower a little dog again a kangaroo and an eye so these are just very, very, very basic shapes. So using number 10 watercolour brush, fully loaded with water, I'm applying water to the ball. With everything that you paint, whether using um, ink, watercolour, oil paint, you must decide where your light's coming from on your object. So I'm deciding that the light on this ball is coming from the top left hand side. So I'm using my barbecue skewer just dipped into the paint, oh sorry, into the ink. Not a very good circle is it? Anyway. Just by loading up your brush with water and dragging it underneath the object you've just done, it sort of applies the shadow to the to the object. Obviously there's no white paint in pen and ink. The only white you have is the paper. So if you want little little highlights and things, leave the paper dry. You can see on the ball up the top there on the right hand side, just where I'm about touching in now, um, I deliberately left a little bit of white there. It's the shiny part. Now we're coming in with the um, the ink. I always like to remember when you <clears throat> when I'm painting that a painting is a painting I like to think and not like an illustration so the imperfections are all part of it sometimes if if I find something's looking too perfect I'll just run some water along one side edge and, and mess it up if you like um, so that it's not perfect This is episode five we're watching now. In episode six, um, it's sort of semi-advanced pen and ink. So people that have been doing pen and ink for a little while, um, I'll be doing a still, well it is doing a still life, um, which is quite interesting. 
I had an art school in Brisbane for 20 years. <clears throat> I've got a bit of a sore throat today. <clears throat> an art school in Brisbane. It was called um, Artists Out and About Australia. And um, I miss teaching. I haven't taught now for about 10 years. Um, so I'm really happy to be doing these tutorials online, if you like. And then in episode 7, I go on to advanced pen and ink, where I do a large, paint, a large painting, which is 75 centimetres by 55. It's of an old Queensland farm. With a lot of cattle and stuff. That's fun to watch. I live in um, South East Queensland <clears throat> in a small town called Blackbutt, which is about two hours west of Brisbane or northwest of Brisbane. It's a small town. It's got about 12 or 15 shops and a couple of galleries, a fantastic bakery um, and great fun. A lot of uh, inspiration around the area. It's pretty much impossible to do <coughs> pen and ink without a tissue, so um, I usually end up putting too much on at one stage, just like then. So needing the tissue to wipe off the excess. Starting to work on the eye now. If you're just starting painting and you're thinking of maybe doing some watercolour later on, um, you can sort of start off with pen and ink and then add a little bit of colour to it if you you know that's one way to start off I mean if I wanted to now get some burnt sienna paint or something like that I could go over the dog with the burnt sienna paint and you know or add a little bit of um, yellow to the ball or something like that once the ink was dry I mean it's not really the way you do watercolour painting but it you know it's a starting off with it with colour if you like The little picture that's just popped up there on the left hand side. Um, I deliberately left the text in it just to remind me to tell you that it's a picture from my books and the more to the point that once you get the hang of pen and ink I would have <clears throat> done that in about 10 minutes that picture which is which is really good. Most of my books have uh, maybe between 60 and 80 illustrations in each book. They're over 60 pages long. Um, so it's really good if you can use a quick method for some of the pictures. Whereas some of the oil paintings in the books take me a month to do each one. It took about three years to do the paintings for each book.
I'll just do a bit, little bit more to this eye and then I'll let it dry for a couple of minutes before I put the eyelashes in. Now I'll make a start on doing the kangaroo. One of my courses involves basic drawing for total beginners, um, which would be, you know, really um, gives you a heads up on a quick way to learn to draw. I always used to tell my students, if you want to trace something, then do. And a lot of people would frown at me. The bottom line is there's only one person to please and that's yourself. And if you're just starting to paint, and get into art and you've really got no idea how to draw and you haven't got a lot of patience then just trace your outline um, it can take years to learn to draw um, so learn at the same time and um, yeah the main thing is that you're happy with what you're doing and that you're getting enjoyment from it and relaxation Coming up on the left now, um, I've painted from life over a hundred railway stations around Queensland and New South Wales. Mostly, um, well, about 60 of them were done in watercolour, um, maybe 35 in oil, some in pen and ink. Some in a combination of pen and ink and watercolour, as is the one on the left now. That is Gumeri Station, which is um, oh, about an hour away from Blackbutt in the South Burnett, painted in 1994. Just putting in a few eyelashes now on the eye. If you're interested in seeing some of my other works, um, my railway works you can see on my website, which is janetskinner.com. I also have a Facebook page, Janet Skinner, artist and author. I do a painting most weeks, um, so you can see them popping up on Facebook. If you do subscribe to the channel and press that little bell thing then each time a new film comes up you'll see it. On average I do maybe one film every fortnight. So there'll be lots to look, look, look at. The way I do it isn't necessarily the best way, it's just I'm just sharing with you the way that I paint the way I oil paint, the way I do watercolour and everybody, no, no two artists would ever do the same so it's for everybody to find their own way of doing doing things. Just putting a little map of Australia on my dog there. My books um, are about the use of magical paint that start off in England in 1806 and the story continues on a dairy farm in Australia and all the little dogs in my series have a little map of Australia on them. I also include the little dog um, in most of my paintings somewhere, have to find it. Just coming in now and just putting the finishing touches onto that cylinder there just reaffirming some of the lines it's my trademark come up in the corner there Jen Agatha the timeless dog 
So that's um, Janagatha is my series of books that I write. I hope you hope you've enjoyed watching this today, and um, if you watch it right to the very end, you'll get the details um, about the filmmaker and also um, the website and Facebook contacts and things like that. And uh, say so the next film coming up is um, semi-advanced pen and ink, and then advanced pen and ink. So, hi everyone, it's Mitch here. Hope you enjoyed that video. For the next video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for all future uploads. And if you want to check out my Instagram and Janet's Facebook, it's in the link in the description below.